This is an introductory video to some core Kubernetes concepts. Let's start by talking about pods. So a pod is the smallest and simplest deployable object in Kubernetes, and it represents a single instance of a running process in your cluster. Some of the characteristics include that it can contain single or multiple containers. So a pod can contain one or multiple containers that share the same network namespace, meaning they can communicate with each other using local host and share storage volumes. In terms of the life cycle, pods have a defined life cycle managed by Kubernetes, and they can be created, destroyed, restarted, and rescheduled automatically based on the state of the application. In terms of networking, each pod gets a unique IP address, and containers within a pod can communicate with each other through this IP. They also have a common host name. Next, let's talk about nodes. So a node is a physical or virtual machine that runs your applications and is part of the Kubernetes cluster. And each node is managed by the Kubernetes control plane. So what are some characteristics? Well, let's start by talking about the components. So each node includes different essential components, such as a kubelet, which is an agent that communicates with the control plane and ensures that containers are running in pods as expected. Next, we have the cube proxy. So this is a network proxy that maintains network rules for pod communication and load balancing. And finally, we have the container runtime. So this is the software responsible for running the containers, such as Docker, Container D, etc. And there's really two main types of nodes. Number one is the master node, which manages the Kubernetes cluster and the control plane components. For example, the API server, the controller manager, and the scheduler. And second, there's the worker node, and this runs the actual application workloads or the pods. Next, let's talk about deployments. So a deployment is a higher level abstraction that manages the lifecycle of pods and provides declarative updates to them. And some characteristics include that it manages the desired state. So users will define the desired state, including the number of replicas, the container images, etc. And the deployment controller ensures that the actual state matches the desired state. It also supports rolling updates. So deployments facilitate rolling updates and allows updates to pods without any downtime. And it manages the process of gradually replacing old pods with new ones. It also handles rollback. So if any update fails, Deployments allow easy rollback to a previous version of the application. Next, we have config maps. So config maps are API objects that allow you to store non-confidential data in key value pairs. And config maps are used to configure applications without altering the application code. So notice how it's configuration data as opposed to configs defined in the application code. So what are some characteristics? Number one is data storage. You're able to store configuration data separately from the application, which enables easy updates and changes. In terms of the usage, config maps can be consumed by pods as environment variables, command line arguments, or mounted as files in a volume. And it provides flexibility because they support configuration that may vary between environments. So based on development, testing, or production. How about secrets? Secrets are actually very similar to a config map, but it's intended for sensitive information, such as passwords, OAuth tokens, or SSH keys. And secrets are encoded in Base64 for secure transmission. What are some characteristics? Well, number one is security, right? So secrets are stored in the Kubernetes API server with a higher level of security than config maps. So access to secrets can be controlled with Kubernetes RBAC or role-based access control. 
And in terms of the usage, secrets can be injected into pods as environment variables or mounted as files similar to config maps. And it provides data encryption. So Kubernetes supports encrypting secrets at rest to enhance security. Next, we have namespaces. So the definition is that a namespace is a way to partition a Kubernetes cluster into multiple virtual clusters. And it allows resource isolation and organization within a single physical cluster. And what are some characteristics? So number one is resource management. So each namespace provides a scope for names and ensures that resource names, for example, pod names are unique within that namespace. Secondly, it provides isolation. So namespaces can be used to isolate environments, for example, development, staging and production or teams, allowing different policies and resource quotas. It also has the concept of a default namespace. So when known namespace is provided, Kubernetes uses the default namespace. Commonly used system namespaces include kubesystem for system services and cube public for resources accessible to all users. And finally, let's talk about ingress. So an ingress is an API object that manages external access to services within a Kubernetes cluster, typically HTTP or HTTPS traffic. And some characteristics is that Ingress has routing rules. So Ingress defines routing rules based on host names and paths, and it directs incoming requests to the appropriate backend service based on these rules. It also has TLS termination. So Ingress can handle TLS termination, managing these SSL certificates and secure connections. And finally, there's Ingress controller. So an Ingress controller, for example, Nginx, will implement the ingress rules and is responsible for managing the routing of incoming traffic.